not in bed yet. What a surprise. It is late, Alexei Alexandrovich. I want to speak to you, Anna. Speak to me? What about? Well, let us talk if we must. But it is late and I would rather go to sleep. Assuming the questions relating to feelings are matters of conscience, into which I have no right to probe, it is still my duty as head of the family to guide you. What are you talking about? And now you are not yourself this evening. Alexei Alexandrovich, I don't understand you. I feel that an indiscretion such as you were guilty of tonight may lead people to talk about you. Indiscretion? Tonight? I went to Princess Betsy's house this evening to take you home. I noticed, or rather it was forced upon my notice, that your conversation with Count Vronsky attracted considerable attention. Isn't that typical of you? You don't like me to enjoy myself and you don't like me to be bored. I was not bored this evening. Is that what troubles you? Please don't crack your fingers. You know how much I dislike it. Really, I think you're most inconsiderate. To cause me this stupid anxiety just when I have the greatest need of all my mental powers and should be concentrating on important affairs. Please let me finish undressing. It's my duty to remind you of your obligations. Our lives are united by God. That bond can only be broken by crime. Such a crime brings its own punishment. I really don't know what crime you are talking about, and I'm dreadfully sleepy. I love you. I consider jealousy to be a degrading sentiment. But there are certain laws of propriety which cannot be broken without the gravest consequences. Have you no explanation? There is nothing to explain, except that I am falling asleep. Tell her, Anushka, she can go to bed. Her mistress won't be home for quite a while. And you can go to bed too, I shan't need you.
promise me nothing. And I ask for nothing. Unless you change your mind about that little word that you call hateful. I dislike it because for me it means too much. More than you could possibly understand. I know. Friendship, perhaps. Friendship? Between us? That is impossible. We can either be strangers or lovers. Nothing in between. Alexei, this isn't like you. Thank you. It's late, you know. It's nearly two o'clock. Yes. You're always in bed by 12 sharp. Is anything wrong? I have to talk to you, Anna. Now? Whatever for? Because I have to. It's important. What is so important? Well, talk if you must, but you'd be far better getting a good sleep. Yes. At present, as you are aware, my mind and my whole energies are occupied with a project of great moment. Then go to but bed. I... Sleep on it. But as you know, I'm not one to suffer anxiety and troubles without facing them. I need to make decisions. Then make them, Alexei. What have they to do with me? Everything. I must put you on your guard, Anna. I, I want to warn you. What about? My dear Alexei, what should I have to guard against? Against thoughtlessness and indiscretion. Well, that's all it is, of course. I'm convinced of that. But you may find yourself talked about, not pleasantly, in society. Alexei, really? Your long conversation this evening, animated conversation with Count Vronsky. Well, I noticed it myself, and others did too. It attracted attention. So that's it. How can you be so inconsistent? First you are afraid I may be dull and now you don't wish me to enjoy myself. I was not dull this evening. Does that offend you? Alexei, please, don't do that. But this is what I want to say. But first, I'm not jealous. I, I, I look upon jealousy as a degrading and humiliating emotion. I could never be influenced by jealousy. No, then why make a scene? But there are certain rules of propriety. Ah, propriety. And in our position, one cannot disregard them with impunity. And tonight, everybody noticed your behavior and your manner. Without being improper, they were certainly indiscreet. You made it quite clear. You're not jealous. Good. There is no reason why you should be. But appearances are everything, and so we must be careful to keep up appearances. Well, I suppose that's a reasonable attitude, but I don't think much of it. What matters to you is the opinion of other people. Apart from that, you don't care a bit, is that it? You must understand me. I have no right to question your feelings. But I would consider that futile, even harmful. By ferreting in our souls, we sometimes find things which are better left hidden. So I consider your emotions to be a matter for your own conscience. But you have a duty. And it's my duty to point it out to you. Our lives were joined by God, not by man. Only a crime can sever that union. And Anna, such a crime brings its own heavy punishment. I have no idea what you mean. Oh, please don't speak like that. Oh, believe me, I'm saying this as much for my sake as for yours. I'm your husband and I love you. Oh, come now, Alexei. You love your work, your position in society. Well, but but very you... well, then let us leave me out of it and speak only of you, of you and our son. Well, if, if I have made a mistake, if I'm wrong, then I ask your pardon. But if you yourself feel that there's any 
even the slightest possibility that I haven't, then I beg you to reflect. I beg you, Anna, to tell There me. is nothing to tell. Go to bed, Alexei. Anna, I have to warn you. Warn me? What about? That by thoughtlessness and indiscretion, you may cause yourself to be talked about in society. You're beginning to attract attention. I'm sure they're only rumors. You were always like that. You don't like me to be dull, and then you don't like it when I go out and enjoy myself. Just to let you know I can't stand it. And I would like to know what all this is about. Your feelings are the affair of your own conscience, but I'm duty-bound to point out to you your duties. Our lives have been joined not by man, but by God. Only... A crime can sever that union. A crime of that nature brings its own heavy punishment. I don't understand a thing you are saying. And besides, I'm desperately sleepy. Anna, for God's sake, don't speak like that. Perhaps I'm mistaken. But believe me, what I say, I say as much for my sake as for yours. I'm your husband, and I love you. But if there are the slightest grounds... I have nothing to say. It is really bedtime. Stayed up to talk to you. What about? It's late. Where's Anushka? I sent her off. Well, if you want to talk, we should go to bed. I must warn you about something. Warn me. Oh, it's really rather late. I wish to warn you that you may inadvertently, by indiscretion and carelessness, give the world occasion to talk about you. I am not a committee. Please say what you want to tell me. You and Camp Vronsky attracted attention tonight. And you don't like it when I don't talk to people, and you don't like it when I do. I didn't notice anything myself, but I saw everyone else notice. I consider jealousy to be insulting to you and degrading to me. I have no right to inquire into your feelings. They concern only your conscience. But it's my duty to remind you that we are bound together by God. And this bond can only be broken by a crime against God. I have nothing to say to you. And you have a son. And I'm tired. If I am wrong, I ask your pardon. I don't know what you're talking about. And it's really too late for this. Excuse me, please.
I need to talk to you. Sorry, I'm terribly sleepy. The minister regretted your absence. I'll make up for it the next time we invite him. Let's go to bed. It's late. I have to warn you. About what? Your conversation with Count Ronsky attracted attention. Are you jealous? My jealousy would be offensive for you and humiliating for me. Offensive? So offend me. Offend me. Make me feel like I matter to you. I find such a thing humiliating. Not humiliating, sincere. Say what, what you feel for me, what your emotions are. We are talking are. about your behavior. Not my emotions, not even yours, which I don't want to enter into. I'm obliged to, to remind, remind you. you of your duties. Yeah. It's late. Что же это такое? О чем это? Ну давай переговорим, если так надо. А лучше бы спать. Анна, я должен предостеречь тебя. Предостеречь? В чем? Я хочу предостеречь тебя в том, что по несмотрительности и легкомыслию ты можешь подать повод в свете говорить о тебе. Твой слишком оживленный разговор сегодня с графом Вронским обратил на себя внимание. Ты всегда так. <смех> не понимаю. То тебе неприятно, когда я скучна. То тебе неприятно, когда я весела. Мне не скучно было. Тебя это оскорбляет? Анна, ты ли это? <смех> да что ж ты такое? Что тебе от меня надо? Я вот что намерен сказать. Я прошу тебя выслушать меня. Я признаю, как ты знаешь, ревность чувством оскорбительным и унизительным. Я никогда не позволю себе руководствоваться этим чувством. Но есть известные законы, которые нельзя приступать безнаказанно. Решительно ничего не понимаю. Да не здоров, Алексей Александрович. Я слушаю, что будет. И даже с интересом слушаю, потому что желал бы понять, в чем дело. Входить в подробности твоих чувств я не имею права. Да и вообще считаю это бесполезным и даже вредным. Твои чувства – дело твоей совести. Но я обязан перед тобой, перед собой, перед Богом указать тебе на твои обязанности. Жизнь наша связана. И связана не людьми, а Богом. Разорвать эту связь может только преступление. И преступление этого рода влечет за собой тяжелую кару. Ничего не понимаю. Ах, боже мой, как мне на беду спать хочется. Она, ради Бога, не говори так. Может быть, я ошибаюсь. Но поверь. Поверь, я говорю столько же за себя, сколько и за тебя. Я муж твой. Я люблю тебя. Алексей Александрович. Право, я не понимаю. Определи, что ты находишь. Позволь, дай мне договорить. Я люблю тебя. Но я говорю не о себе. Главные лица тут наш сын и ты сама. Если ты сама чувствуешь, что есть хоть малейшее основание, то я тебя прошу подумать, если сердце тебе говорит высказать мне. 
Мне нечего сказать. Да и право поразбудь.